Hi, my name is Max Strider from BetterParenting.com and in this video I want to share a short story with you, a personal story about my life that I think will help open up your eyes to how the public school system is intentionally stunting your child's development, specifically trying to stunt your child's creativity and the havoc that if left unattended, those consequences and th those actions will wreak on your child's life and their potential as they, they grow up and grow older. So here's the story I wanted to share with you. About five years ago, I decided to join a local gym that had a racquetball court in it. And I don't play racquetball. I'm no good at racquetball. I'm kind of a coordinated guy, but uh, I never played racquetball. And a friend of mine joined the gym with me, and we decided we were going to get some workouts in by playing racquetball because it would be more fun. Well, it didn't take long to realize that I was terrible at racquetball because my friend was beating me literally nine out of every ten games we would play for weeks on end. And because I'd been taught to think creatively by my parents in very unconventional ways, I decided to do something. And I'd like to ask you to ask yourself if your children would have asked the same thing uh, themselves. What I decided to do is I decided to go to my local library. No coaching, right? There's no money on the line. It's just personal pride. I don't want to get beat nine out of ten times in a row. And I went to the library because I didn't have any money. And I said, hmm, I wonder if there's a book on how to play racquetball. And specifically, I was looking for how to shoot the kind of shots that the other players can't get to. They're called kill shots in racquetball. And so I went to the library and I actually found a book. I don't remember the title anymore, but I found this book on how to shoot kill shots in racquetball. I read it. it, took me, I don't know, an hour just sitting there in the library, and then went back to the gym. To make a long story really, really short, never again, maybe out of 30 more games my, my friend played with me, did he ever beat me. Because I was willing to go find information that wasn't known. I was trying to be creative enough to find additional information that uh, the person I was competing against did not know. And just by finding a little information, an hour in a library with a free book, I was able to never lose again. And this principle is something that I have noticed from uh, growing several businesses in my life and watching how people react to certain things uh, is, is, is a skill that most children never develop how to do. They never develop the ability to look at a problem and they go look for tiny details that, that, uh, and answers to questions that, that nobody knows the answer to. They have to go discover them for themselves. They have to even figure out their own question to ask themselves. And the funny thing about this is I actually told my friend about the book that I had got but he still wasn't willing to go read the book for whatever reason. Now, maybe it was because racquetball wasn't a passion or whatever. I don't know the reason, but I think the story is interesting. And I really want to challenge you. Would your child, ask yourself this, would your child or is your child growing up to be the kind of person that will ask that question? Are, are you putting your child in an educational environment where they will come across a challenge and then go look to weird answers for problems? Or... Is your child right now being trained to read a book and then find all the answers because all the answers are in the book? Uh, shown how to do a math problem and then told to memorize it. Told to memorize the, fo the formula to photosynthesis. And is it all about memorizing facts and oh here's the book to go get it? Or is it about discovering answers that you don't even know questions to? Hopefully the answer to this question is incredibly obvious. Obviously creating a type of child and a type of thinking process inside of a child that is trained to go look deeper for more, for more in-depth, uh, better answers than just surface thinking and just taking spoon-fed answers that the, uh, the government or the school system or adults or a boss or any superior in their life uh, just hands them uh, is hands down always turns out better if your child can do the creative process instead of taking the spoon-fed answers or the really easy to find answers. So if you were to take schooling or public school systems or just school for the average public person uh, in context with this story I'd like to ask you is the school system that you are currently enrolling or putting your child in fostering this type of thinking or is it fostering the spoon-fed type of thinking? Well, we actually know the answer to this question and I want to point you to a resource that will help open up your minds to actually how the public school system's original mission was actually to stifle creative thought. You can actually go look at the speeches written by the people who designed the public school system, both big business and big government, and realize, oh, 
They wanted to raise a society that was manageable, that would not think outside the box, and that would just follow orders. And if you're like me, that kind of makes you want to puke and uh, absolutely pissed off that anybody would want to warp my child's brain like that and not give me a say and kind of do it behind my back. So I wanted to open up your eyes to this and uh, give you a revolutionary type of way of thinking of this just a little bit differently. And the best resource that I currently have for you is to send you to an interview that I recently did with the author of Weapons of Mass Instruction. That's I-N, not destruction. So Weapons of Mass Instruction. This book was written by John Taylor Gatto. And if you go to my website, betterparenting.com, and you search uh, for that, that book title, Weapons of Mass Instruction, you can find an, an hour-long interview where I interviewed John on this process, on all of his research, where he's won awards for his research, uh, gotten, he's a best-selling author about uncovering these evils of the public school system, and you can actually go hear them if you kind of want the hour summary, or you can you know, go to Amazon and, and order his book, which I'd highly recommend you do as well. It's Weapons of Mass Instruction. And what you'll find when you go listen to that interview or read that book is uh, you, will, you will find proof that uh, they are not out to help you. They're actually out to manipulate you and stuff your child into a box and uh, crank them out on an assembly line that will just think like they do, vote like they want you to, uh, just obey and not be creative. But don't just take my word for it. Here's what Woodrow Wilson said while he was the president of Princeton University and speaking to the New York City School Teachers Association in 1909. Quote, We want one class of persons to have a liberal education, and we want another class of persons, a very much larger class, of necessity in every society, to forego the privileges of a liberal education and fit themselves to perform specific, difficult, manual tasks. Now, why would he say this? Well, at the time, big coal, big oil, big steel, all of those big companies needed lots of manual labor, and this was one of the ways he thought he could get those uh, companies or, or the people to actually be willing to work for these types of companies to make them a lot of money, amongst a bunch of other reasons. And as for how big business, specifically big industry, who was wanting and seeking all of this cheap manual labor who would just follow orders, here's a website like you to pause this video and go visit to that kind of unveils all of the really evil things that the Rockefeller Foundation uh, has done over time, and I'll just show you a few of them. Here's this website, Rockefeller and Global Mind Control, and if you scroll, scroll down, I just want to show you one thing that I uh, was able to reference uh, that I thought was kind of scary. Specifically look around this area here in the evil things they did in 1920s through the 30s, and you realize they funded all sorts of things. Lots of like eugenics types things, and lots of, we believe there should be an elite class and a non-elite class, and we even believed in like breeding them out of existence and breeding elite people. Spooky evil stuff. And uh, if you go to the prologue of the book that I've been talking about that kind of displays this argument more beautifully for you, if, if this can be called beautiful, uh, John Gatto's book, uh, quoting from the prologue of the book, in 1933, the Rockefeller Foundation announced that they were funding a national program to allow, quote, the control of human behavior. And if you'd like to do your own homework on this, I'd highly recommend you check out this site. There's lots of resources uh, and sources of information that I obviously don't have time to go into and prove to you here in a short YouTube video. But here's some places where you can go look this stuff up for yourself. So if listening to this and discovering this is kind of making you want to like puke in your mouth a little bit, then uh, I want to give you a little bit of hope here because there are proven things to do that will... Uh, foster creative thought and can undo the damage that the public school system uh, either will do to your child or uh, will soon do or ha has already done. And there are proven methods that can undo this damage and re-foster creative outside-the-box thinking, which I think you really want for your child if you have children. And in the interview that I did on my website uh, at betterparenting.com with John, he alludes to it at the end, and I'll just give you the nugget right here so that you can appreciate it. And that is the way to teach your child to think outside of the box 
is you have to give them projects where they have to discover the answers. You don't show them how to do it and then let them do it. They actually have to discover it for themselves. And here's an example from my own family's life. My grandfather thought this way and uh, with one of my uncles, he decided to give my uncle a project to teach him to think outside the box. And the project was uh, they lived on the beach and uh, there was a hill coming up the beach and they had a property on top of the hill which uh, I think like a mudslide or something had wiped out the stairs to the property. And so my grandfather said, okay, here's some money, uh, go rebuild the stairs. And like, <laughs> that was all he said. So I imagine my uncle kind of looked at my grandfather and went, uh, I, I don't know how to build stairs. Uh, and my grandfather's response was always, well, you know, you need to go figure it out. It's gonna require some concrete. Why don't you go ask these people? He did not spoon feed him the answers. And the end result is that the stairs got built beautifully. They still stand today, did an amazing job. And now my uncle does very creative things in uh, different sorts of building projects, uh, doing traveling, sailing around the world in ships. He actually almost got his pirate ship. He actually owns a pirate ship onto uh, Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Uh, it was in the running for the ship to actually use. Lots of creative stuff. And I don't believe that it would have happened without a, an adult influence in his life that taught him to think outside the box and creatively. So go think of a project for your child today. Give them a project that they don't know how to do and ask them to go find the answers to it and do this as often as possible. And I think your child will end up being a whole heck of a lot better than the, quite honestly, average to below average people that the public school system cranks out. It's not pretty and you don't want your kid to be one of them. So go give your kid a project today and watch as their creative muscles start to flex and they start to really become the people that they were originally designed to become. Oh yeah, and one more thing in closing. I don't want to make this sound like I totally bash public school and that you have to go private. Actually, most private schools are just as bad. The only real difference is that public schools tend to be secular and private schools tend to be religious. And that can be a big difference depending on your religion. But as far as using the same system put to manipulate and create manageable people who will simply take orders, basically they all use the same system. And finally, I'd like to just give a shout out to my new friends over at revolutionaryalternatives.blogspot.com who uh, motivated me to put this video together for you guys and um, I just wanted to uh, have you ha say, go check those guys out. They've got some very interesting things on, uh, on all sorts of areas of life where you should challenge the status quo.